Okay, so uh, I think we can start uh, with this session. Okay, so I will quickly share my screen. Rohit, uh, you can share your screen, uh, but wait five minutes, okay? Uh, maybe some of the students will be joined, okay, around one to two minutes. I'll just little bit introduce the, every person about the community, okay? So, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Pushparaj and I am the founder of this community, Need Data Community. So basically, the community goal is uh, we, every week that we will conduct a workshop on different different domain on technology like data science field and data analysis field like Power BI, Tableau and uh, Python. Okay, so in this week we start on Power BI module and we also that WhatsApp group. So in particular WhatsApp group, you can find the project on daily basis on data science field. Okay, different, different domain and different, different industries. Like uh, uh, that everyone uh, that uh, maybe so many member will be are available in our WhatsApp groups and LinkedIn page. Okay, so wait a minute. I'll share with you screen with you and then you will be definitely get the properly idea that where you can find properly material regarding from this data science and data analysis field. Okay and where you join the particular future uh, workshops, okay? So after the lecture, I'll show you the everything, okay? So uh, right now I request you, Mr. Rohit, then start this lecture on Power BI module. If you're facing any difficulty and doubt regarding in this workshop, and you will find this is very beneficial for you, so you can join the next week also, the uh, workshop on this Power BI module, the second lecture, okay? And different topics, okay? So we cover on Power BI module like all data modeling, uh, data understanding and data cleaning, DAX, all the topics and we we'll, in the last of this uh, workshop, uh, we cover one project also, okay? So if you're facing any difficulty and doubt regarding from this workshop, please uh, be present in this uh, meeting. We'll discuss in the uh, in the end of this meeting, before the end of this meeting, okay? Uh, Rohit, I request you please start this meeting, okay? Rohit is your trainer today. Uh, yeah, sure. So I'll quickly share my screen. Yeah, screen is visible for everyone. Okay, uh, I hope my screen is visible to everyone. Yeah, it's visible for everyone, right? Okay. Okay, so uh, today we are going to take a brief introduction about uh, Power BI. So basically, what is Power BI? First, so Power BI is a tool of visualization. Now, when you are going to get uh, get into data uh, analysis field or data science. So uh, basically, when you would be working for any company and you would be working over there as a data analyst or data scientist, so whatever data you are going to get from various sources to represent that data in front of the leaders or in front of managers or in front of bosses for whom you are working, going to work, uh, see, for them, understanding that data right away, that would not be that much easy. Apart from them, suppose you want to represent that data in front of any other third party, like any other uh, person, a person from outside of that company, any other client. So uh, represent, representing that data directly, that would not be that easy. So for that only we have visualization, uh, data visualization uh, available in data analysis. Power BI is one of the tools which we can use for converting basic data or converting any kind of data into visualization. Now, why exactly we need to convert a data into visualization? So, see, uh, if, if I just give you one example that uh, suppose if I am giving you a book of Harry Potter or book of any, any uh, random story, so for reading that entire book will take a lot of time. But in the same place, if I show you any movie, a movie based on that same book, that will take around two or uh, two, uh, two and a half hours. And in that much time, uh, entire book story would get covered. And uh, I know many of, many of us are not uh, that much uh, reading level. I am, to be honest, I am also not a reading lover. I don't love to read. 
So even if uh, you are give, even if I am having a lot of time, still if I start reading, I'll feel sleepy. I I I won't be able to complete even two to three pages in one go. So that's why visualization is very handy in such cases where the data is a bit complex and you want to represent it in a simplest form in front of those people who are not very much familiar with that data. When exactly we can utilize this visualization? So we have visualization tool or the power BI. when exactly we can use that. So uh, whenever we have data with us and that data we want to present in front of other people who don't know anything about that data, that time we can use Power BI for visualization, visualizing that data. Who exactly do, uh, who exactly can use uh, Power BI? So anyone can use Power BI. As long as you have understanding about data, as long as you know what exactly you are going to go, uh, you are going to do with that data, you can use Power BI. And how? So how is something which is we are going to cover in this entire course? Okay, uh, all in all this upcoming session, we are going to cover that only. How exactly we can utilize Power BI? Okay. But before start using Power BI, we need to know how we can install Power BI. So for installing Power BI procedure, it's very simple. We have to go to any of the browser. And in that browser, we just need to type in search box Power BI desktop download. So if I just open a fresh tab and there in search box, if I type Power BI desktop download and if I search for that, now, very first thing, as I am using Windows, and in that, in that also, I am using the Edge browser, uh, which is having the Bing, uh, Microsoft Bing as a search engine. So that's why very first result which it is popping over here, that is for Microsoft Store. Okay, but if you are using Chrome, so in that you will not get this as a first result. You will get download microsoft power bi this as a first result okay so we need to click on that first result download microsoft power bi that would be a link of microsoft itself so we need to click over there so once we click over there <coughs> very first option we just need to scroll down a bit very first option we have that is microsoft power bi desktop so we are going to utilize initially we are going to utilize only microsoft power bi desktop Okay, so in that we have two options so download and advanced download options. So if you click on download, so it will redirect you to the Microsoft Store. We don't want that, we don't want to do that. If you have Microsoft, Microsoft Store, so from there also we can install Power BI directly. Okay, but see, uh, I know many one of uh, many of us uh, would not have, uh, may not have proper account uh, in Microsoft and downloading or installing something from microsoft that needs account okay so without having microsoft, uh, microsoft account also we can install it so for that you don't need to click on download we need to click on advanced download option so once we click on advanced download option a new page would open okay now on this new page uh, you, you just need to scroll down a little bit and there we have option of download uh, a language will keep as English only uh, once we click on download it will ask you uh, in which version you want to download it okay so we have two versions over there power bi desktop setup uh, exe and then power bi desktop setup underscore x64 so this x64 is basically for uh, is basically a 64 bit version of Power BI desktop. Okay, so prefer to go with this 64 bit version. Okay, because that is something which would be compatible for majority of latest version of Windows. Okay, so we'll go with the 64 bit version and once we click on download, so download will get started. Okay, now this uh, download uh, would take depending upon the internet speed it will take some time in my system uh, power bi is installed and ready so you just need to give some time to download and you have to uh, install it like a normal software like just uh, just like how we install games or any other 
third party software uh, in windows that way only we have to install it okay over there it will ask you uh, some permission that permission only you have to provide and once you're done with the installation i'll do one thing uh, i'll just uninstall the one which i have and then i'll show you the installation part as well let me just quickly uninstall power bi from my system where is power bi <clears throat> Okay, so Power BI got uninstalled from my system. Yeah. And the download is also almost done. So once it got downloaded completely, we will see how to install it. So, in the download, uh, download got completed. So, under the download folder, I can see, I can just, I'll just re refresh it from here. I can see the software which got downloaded, Power BI Desktop Setup 64. I'll just open that setup. Now, this window will open up over there. I'll just keep this window on top yeah so this window will remain over there now here you can select the language of your preference go with english then click on next one pop-up will uh, appear uh, that would be the administration permission that you want to install it on the hard drive of your computer so just click on yes once you click on yes yeah. So the installation will get started and then it will ask you some further permission. Click on next. Click on I accept the term uh, of the license agreement. Then click on yes. Next. Create a desktop shortcut. If you want a desktop shortcut, you can make uh, you can keep it checked only and then click on install. Uh, Rohit, sorry for the disturbance. Uh, you share the two screen. I think Sejal, which I don't know. Sorry? Uh, you share multiple screen, I think. Something. I have shared the entire screen. So now, now it's visible that two screens are visible in the previous. Okay. Now it's clear. Okay. So let the installation get done and after that we'll get into Power BI. Thank you. 
okay now the installation got completed now there is a checkbox uh, launch microsoft power bi desktop so i'll keep that checked so that once i click on finish power bi will open up automatically Yeah, I I hope uh, Power BI screen is visible to everyone. Can someone give uh, give any confirmation? Yeah, it's visible to me. Okay. Now, once we get into Power BI, now here is some. Uh, this is the place where. Magic happens. This is the place where we can can so work. Can you can you make this screen bigger because uh, bigger? Yes. I have shared my entire screen. I can't make it bigger more than this. You can click on the three dot, and then the option is available for full screen. Which three dot? Wait, I'll just guide you to Prashant. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we get yeah because tool tool installation is something which we were doing so yeah now after that uh, basics of data handling so I I hope we all are aware about uh, what is data exactly before proceeding further can someone uh, give me brief as per your understanding what is data uh, you are allowed to unmute yourself and you can tell me as per your understanding what is data exactly uh, yeah hi right may i yes, start sir. yes yes you can go ahead yeah overall uh, i can say that uh, the unorganized uh, inputs which we got from uh, which we get from various uh, uh, sources Correct. and we can accumulate it and uh, get uh, finally a result which uh, which can get a proper meaningful insights that's correct correct thing. very right very right um other any other inputs some other uh see there is nothing uh wrong uh whatever you have in your mind about data you can say like uh, as per your understanding what is data so if you are going to get into data field, you you must be knowing what is data. You must be having little bit idea what is data. Uh, yes, Rohit. Mm. Okay, so see, uh, basically we are surrounded by data. Uh, anything, you may be sitting on a chair, you may be sitting on a floor you may be sitting somewhere else you are breathing air so everything anything and everything you can consider as a data so uh, the chair on which you are sitting for that that is something for us it is a luxury but uh, we have purchased that chair from someone so for that person it becomes a data like uh, what was the cost of that chair how, what was the manufacturing cost of the chair uh, in which in how much uh, quantity that chair was there in his warehouse yeah? so that kind of data that becomes the data for uh, that person uh, who who were uh, uh, running uh, who who has uh, sold am i audible hello wait a minute guys hello can somebody tell me that who's the host of this meeting? I think Need Data Community is uh, the host. And uh, I guess uh, Rohit, yeah, Rohit was taking it forward. Uh, I am audible, I hope, now. I think Rohit is Yeah. Yeah, Rohit, we can. Uh, we can hear you. Yeah. Okay. I'll share my screen. I think. Yeah. 
yeah so we were actually starting data so see uh, yeah, i was actually giving example uh, what can be considered as data uh, so air which we are breathing so that air for us it is the uh, question of life and death but uh, for uh, department of pollution that can be a data for them light electricity that can be data for someone else right so we are actually surrounded by data now whenever uh, wherever and whenever uh, it comes to data uh, that has to be presented in front of uh, the leaders uh, so that based on that data they can take some important decision they can uh, decide some strategy for betterment of the company okay so that is just a small brief of data now when we get data we perform some operations on that data okay now visualization is something which we can consider uh, as a final or sub final stage of data now over of overall flow of a data analysis uh, if i say or data uh, uh, any 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 operation which we perform on data if if we just consider that consider that flow so basically data get generated first that data got stored somewhere after that data uh, that uh, that data get stored somewhere from that from there um, data analyst can extract that data okay so data analyst some, uh, is someone who extracts that data from there uh, that could be any uh, any source okay so after extraction of that data as that data got stored in any many different places that data uh could have some uh, anomalies in the uh, in itself okay so we need to clean that data we need to modify that that, that data in such a way that we can utilize that data for further operation okay like uh, some data will have some formatting issues some data will have some extra spacing uh, uh overall alignment of data might not be in the proper form so we need to do some data cleaning on that okay after doing the data cleaning we will adjust or we will align that that data in such a way that we can use that data for converting it into visualization okay and eventually we convert it into visualization and then we create dashboard okay now dashboard is something uh, if i just uh, want to give you a brief about dashboard so dashboard is something which consists of multiple charts uh, in school days or in our colleges we have uh, studied charts right chart is something uh, it is a kind of visualization only okay so um, we convert the data into charts and graphs and we uh, keep those all charts and graphs on a single screen and that single screen is nothing but dashboard okay now power bi is a tool which we can utilize for creating such dashboard that is a part of visualization only okay so that is a small brief so in power oh, i have a question uh, yeah hello so comparatively which one is better matplotlib or power bi i mean matplotlib is a library but yeah, comparatively matplotlib, matplotlib is a library of uh, python right uh for using matplotlib you need to have knowledge of python if you don't know python you can't use matplotlib right but for using power bi you don't need to have any knowledge of any language you can use power bi directly without having knowledge of any of the programming language sure yeah okay so uh, so power bi is a tool which we can utilize for creating visualization apart from that power bi is a tool which we can use for doing a data cleaning up to an extent okay so in power bi we have inbuilt tool named as power query which we have in excel as well that allows us to do the etl operation now what is etl operation that is extract transform and load so first we extract data then we transform that data in some, into something and then we load that data okay Okay. Yeah. So we'll get into Power BI now, and we'll see how we can use Power Query over there. So that now, basically, whenever you download, install Power BI, uh, 
from browser the latest version will look somewhat like this okay and then uh, over here very first option we have we have home then we have open now these option which we use when we uh, have power bi file already created and we want to open that file so that time you can go with the open but for now we don't have any power bi file created just assume that uh, so we will start with a new okay so i'll click on this new option so once we click over here there we have some options some guide uh, pop some messages it is popping up over there to guide us okay so i just close these from here okay now uh, before proceeding further now this is the basic overview okay before proceeding further we need to make some setting changes okay so those setting changes are important because if you are not doing those setting changes some of the visual will not work okay so for that we need to get into file tab and there i'll go with the options and settings on the file tab on the left hand side bottom corner we have three options sign in options and settings is about so we need to click on options and settings and in that i'll go with the options once i click on options one new pop up box will open now here we don't need to change as uh, make the setting change in each and every option only two uh, tabs we need to click first we'll go with the security okay in security we need to make sure that in custom visuals these all three boxes are checked that is show security warning then use arcgis power bi and then use map and field map visual okay so for some of us these would be unchecked by default that would be unchecked so you need to check it okay on this security tab we need to do these changes only suppose any of the boxes is un uh, boxes unchecked for you you just need to check them okay now after doing that we have to go little bit below and there we have option named as preview features so we need to click on preview features now in this preview feature also many of the boxes would be unchecked for you okay so you just need to make sure that these boxes are checking checking up okay so you just need to uh, now here enhance public dialog apart from the spanish language support if you know spanish language you can check that as well apart i don't know so i am not checking that box but apart from spanish language support you can check each and every box from here okay and once we done with that we'll click on okay so see i'll repeat this in security tab make sure this rgs power bi custom visual and the map and field map visual these check boxes are checked and then on the preview feature tab apart from spanish language support all other boxes are checked okay so only these setting changes we need to do in the options once we done with that we'll click on okay power bi will ask us to restart this desktop application so i'll click on okay and then i'll just close this power bi from here i'll click on don't save and then i'll open power bi again Yeah, once that got open i'll click on this oh uh, yeah let it load so depending upon the system configuration and your systems pro like processor ram yeah, i'll just close this box yeah uh, power bi loading time would vary okay so depending upon system configuration power bi loading time would vary i'll click over here now this is the main home page of power bi where you have multiple tab now similar kind of uh, outer view you have you must have seen if you have used any microsoft software similar kind of outer view you have you have seen if you just ignore this uh, main portion 
like the central portion if you just ignore just a second if you just ignore portion below this arrow okay uh, just ignore this portion so on on the top whatever we have like the home tab insert tab uh, like these kind of tabs we have seen if you have used any of the microsoft software this is something this this was something they show their software okay they uh, they love to segregate all the options in different tabs okay so on the like by default it will be on home tab only and in home tab you would see the options which are frequently used or which you might use frequently okay it is not like any option uh, any of the option which is available on home tab that would not be available on other tab see on home tab we have this visualization option which is actually available in the insert tab as well so majority options you will get over here which you are going to use very frequently okay now uh, in upcoming session we are going to see all the, all of the options which are important for a data analysis uh, in depth or data visualization rather in depth we are going to see those but for now we'll just take uh, an overview okay now in hope tab very first section which we have that is cut copy paste and then format painter that is something uh, we must have seen in all of the microsoft software be it word be it excel be it powerpoint this section is very common in all of them okay so cut copy paste and then format painter this section would be there on the home tab itself then the next section which we have over here that is something data section now this is the section from where we can connect any kind of data okay now before proceeding into visualization we need to connect some data with the power bi and then only you can proceed for creating visualization now how many types how many different types of type of data visualization you can also data you can connect with power bi for creating uh, different visualization so you can simply the very first option which we have over here that is get data and in that or in uh, if you just click on the drop down of that get data now it is not like oh, we have only these options okay if you just go all the way down there we have more click on more here we get a list of different kind of data sources which we can connect with the power bi obviously we won't be using all of them depending upon the company or the organization in which you are going to work over there whatever data uh, source they are using like it could be the local store file it could be any sharepoint it could be any uh, database so uh, that uh, data you are going you can connect from there and that it is a very useless so uh, i i don't think any of the option would be missed from here okay so uh, majority times you are going to use uh, local store file uh, databases and cloud services only okay and only the procedure or uh, the way of connecting that data with power bi that would differ okay like for like suppose you have local store file so you can connect it directly if you have uh, any database file so for that you need to have credential of the database like the user id and password that is something you need to have uh, and you you need to use those user id and password to logging into the database and then you can take out the data from there okay so that procedure would differ but once you have connected with that data source further each and every step will remain same okay so till the time till the point you are connecting data uh, procedure would differ but once data got connected with power bi everything else will remain same okay for each and every data type so yeah so this is the first section through which we can connect data now ahead of that we have query section now query section is something using which we can get into power query now power query as i told you it is uh, a sub software which is connected in power bi itself for doing etl operation okay so extracting transforming and uh, loading that data that way etl operation for performing etl operation we are going to get into power query 
and this transform data is something which allow us allows us to get into power query okay so when we will connect data with power bi we will use this option from here okay so we are going to see that ahead of that we have option named as insert section okay now this insert section have different visualizations like what how many different visualization we can utilize that is something which is shown over here very first option which we have that is new visual for now we have not connected any data with power bi uh, so for now i'm not uh, sure clicking on any of the option once we connect any data with the power bi we we'll start utilizing this visualization so a new visual is something which by default take one visual that is bar chart okay so directly it will take one visual if i click on that see this bar chart it will take directly over there but there is one in interesting option that is arrange data for me and that is turned on by default okay when you click on this new visual bar chart will get added but this arrange data for me that is by default turned on due to which depending upon what data you are going to add in this, this visualization the visualization will get changed it is not like it is going to remain bar chart only it it can change to the line chart it can change to the pie chart it can change to the, any different other chart as well depending upon the data type which you are going to data uh, which you are going to drag over there okay each and every chart type has their own purpose like you can't use every chart type for ev uh, every chart for every different type of data okay uh, every chart type has their own purpose okay so we are going to see that as well uh, for example uh, suppose uh, if i want to create have we heard about scattered chart or line chart or bar chart yes no yeah yeah yes yeah, right. yes yeah so for creating scattered chart we need to have two numeric values right we we have y axis we have x axis and we need to have numeric values only and based on that only we can create scattered chart right so there if you are adding one numeric value and one non numeric value you can't create scatter chart it will eight like the pointer you can plot but that will not be scatter chart that can be a bar chart that can be uh, a line chart a line chart also is not very much preferable for that kind of data but each and every chart type need uh, a pref a like a data which can be uh, going with like a convenient data only you can give we are, we are going to see that in depth exactly what kind of data you need to have for getting uh, that particular uh, kind of chart okay so for a uh, long story short uh, when you click on this new visual the visual which power bi adds over there it is not like it is going to, going to remain bar chart it will change uh, automatically from here uh, depending upon what kind of data you are going to drag over yeah okay for now i'm just removing it ahead of that we have a section where we have list of charts which are inbuilt in power bi okay so if i just click on this drop down so these are the visuals which we can use directly in power bi why i'm saying directly apart from these also we do have extra visuals but for getting those visual you need to sign in into power bi okay so there are some restrictions. Obviously, um, it is Microsoft, and they are not going to give you everything completely free. But whatever available over here, that you can use without doing sign uh, sign in. Okay. Uh, but apart from this, if you want some extra visual for that, you have to sign in. Okay. And yeah, there is restriction that you can't do sign in using your Gmail ID. A normal personal Gmail ID won't be useful over here. You have to have uh email id of organization so when you would be working in any company you are going to get a uh, email id of that company only that email id can be used over here you can't use normal gmail id over here okay so that is a restriction you have but without doing sign in these visuals you can use and no one is going to restrict you from using this visual okay then ahead of that we have text box we know in which case we can use text box we can use text box for uh, 
keeping in a title over there when we will get into dashboard creation that time we are going to see how we can use this and the last option over here that is more visual now apart from uh these available visual if you want more visual you need to do sign in and then only this this option would be useful okay we are going to see how to use these options as well uh if you have if you are working somewhere and you have your company's email id uh don't use it directly uh, you have to take permission from your it uh, department and then only uh, go for it otherwise um these available options are sufficient enough for practicing purpose okay but if you want to do sign and you want to explore uh, the other charts as well so first you have to take permission from your it if you are working somewhere you have to take permission from your it department and then only you can proceed uh, with the sign in option okay yeah uh, without doing sign in also uh, some extra visual we can load so we are going to see how we can load extra visual without doing sign in as well okay and then we have the interesting section that is calculation now this calculation section is the section using which we can create new fields like suppose uh, i have loaded data and in that data few calculation fields are required which which are not available in the data directly so i don't need to get back to the main data source and adjust the changes over there i can create the calculate field over here directly okay so we are going to see how to utilize that as well okay then the sensitivity is not of uh, much use for us uh, last option on the home tab we have that is publish so once we're done with the creation of uh, our dashboard this publish option we are going to utilize when we want to show the dashboard to other members or when we want to uh, on organization level we want to showcase our work okay uh, yeah but for doing publish also we need to have the sign in like we need to do sign in and then only we would be able to do the publish thing okay that was the introduction of home tab and as i told you in the start uh may majority options on the home tab would be uh the frequently used option and it means that would be available on other tabs as well so if i go to the insert tab the next tab so on that you can see the new page so this new page is nothing but the this plus sign where i'm hovering now on the downward when you want to add multiple pages see uh there is a rule it is not a hard and fast rule but there, there is a rule that uh, on one page of visualization you should keep five to seven graphs five to seven okay depending on the size five to seven graphs only don't go beyond that otherwise it will look flattery okay uh, so uh, once you start creating visualization you will have a you will get a better idea uh, as you are going to represent that in front of leader so it should look good okay visualization basically has that single purpose only uh, that uh, it should uh, visual uh, visualize data obviously but apart from that it should look good okay so for that if you are unable to uh, adjust everything on one page you will be adding other pages as well over there Uh, apart from that we do have some other use cases for adding pages okay so yeah on insert tab this new page and this plus icon is nothing it is both are the same thing you can add a new page from here or you can simply click on this plus icon to add a new page then this new visual and this gallery visual gallery that is something we have already seen on the home tab it is the same thing okay and apart from that yeah next to that we have this ai visual section now this ai visuals are not separate thing they are available in this visual section already so if you can see these four ai visuals and if i just scroll down here also we have ai visual those are the same things so microsoft is something which uh, loves to keep their software user friendly so it's completely on you from where you want to use that option but option would be available uh, at multiple pages uh, multiple places okay uh, ahead of that we have this power platform and for that also you need to do sign in so for now i am just skipping this part and not explaining this uh, right away 
we'll keep this for next session uh, these elements uh, these ele elements section is something which you are going to utilize uh, while creating dashboard okay so these are this is not a, a rocket science uh, here we are going to like for making our dashboard beautiful these these are the things which we are going to utilize over there we can add shapes we can add button for navigation we can we can add image for keeping it as a reference or a different way we can uh, utilize them okay and this parkland also uh, for now we are keeping it aside uh, uh, sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. Uh, can you please we start with some transforming data on a raw specimen data if you have? It will be will be glad to see that. It will be much more exciting. And meanwhile, we can also you know use those home insert modeling and all those stuff. Okay. Side so side. actually, uh, as it is the first session only, so that's why I was keeping only introduction part. Uh, considering uh, not all of us would be uh, that much uh, uh, into yeah, data think, stuff yeah, already. Over, yeah, I think everyone over here is uh, kind of intermediate level. So maybe you can start with some transformation of the data. It would be very easy. Uh, anyone can stop in between if uh, they are not able to understand. At least please be start with some raw data if you have. Thank okay. You. Okay. Mm. Okay, so just a second. Let me check whether I have any file with me for now because I have, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. If you take your time. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I do have a file of a global superstore with me. So I'll just show you how to connect the file for now. So considering the time, uh, we are left with five to 10 minutes only. So I'll show how to connect it and how to get into Power Query. But with that topic, we're going to continue in the next session. Okay, okay. so yeah, for connecting any data, we need to get into Home tab. And in the home tab, as it is a static file and as it is a Excel file. So for Excel file, we get the option outside directly. Excel workbook over here itself. Apart from that, I can get it to get data. There also I get the option of Excel workbook directly. The very first option as it is a Microsoft software only. If I click on more, there also very first option I get Excel workbook and outside also uh, when any data is not connected, uh, uh, like uh, your Power BI is very fresh, uh, like the file is very fresh and no data is connected, 
uh, very first option on very main screen you will get that is import data from Excel. Okay, so you can use any one of the options. So I'll click over here and then I'll go to the source file where I kept it. Like I'll, I just go into, I need to go to that location where I kept that file. And from there, I'll click on the file, I click on open. Now, once you click on the file and click on open, a new window will open over here. It will take some time, depending upon the file size, time would vary, yeah. This navigator window would open. And in this now, now this navigator window uh, is something from where you can get into Power Query. Now, Power Query is something we utilize when we we are uh, not sure the data is cleaned or not. Okay, so for about this data, if I want to check whether the data is cleaned or not, I'll just select all these three tables. Now these are not tables actually; these are sheets. There is a difference. Uh, there is a different icon uh, we get for table. Uh, these icon belongs to sheet. Okay, this is something we are going to cover uh, again in next session. But for now, I'm just uh, taking you through. So I'll just select these three files. And to get into Power Query, we'll not click on Load, we'll click on Transform Data. OK. I'll click on Transform Data. So a new window, it will open the Power Query window. Now, Power Query window, like, yeah, this is the Power Query uh, window. Now, Power Query is something where we are going to perform all the ETL operation. Now, on the very left-hand side, we have section named as Query section, and this Query section is nothing. Like, over there, you have name of all the tables, okay? So, you can click on the table name, and you can see, uh, like you can just go through the table. You can check uh, whether any changes are required. Now, for example, suppose I am on this people table. So there we have header names as a uh, name as column one and column two, which is not appropriate name. I can see that this very first row uh, having the actual header name over there. So for that, we direct we do have direct option on the home tab itself. Uh, yeah. So when we will get into power query, I'm going to explain you majority options. Uh, in depth, okay, but for now I'll just show you. Uh, like suppose I do, I I don't want to keep this column one and column two as a header of the column because that is something going to create problem when I'm going to start creating visualization. Okay, so for that I just want to bring this first two in the place of header. So there we have option named as. If I just take you through the home tab. So first we have this closed section, then new query, data source, parameter, query. If I just proceed a bit further, then we have section named as transform. And in that section, we have option named as use first to as a header. So I'll just click on that. Okay, so once I click on use first to as a header, so it will remove the column one and column two from the header place and it will take first row of that table as a header. Okay. So that way it can easily replace it. And in Power, uh, Power Query, uh, undo and redo will not work. That is uh, your Control Z and Control Y. That will not work over there. Okay. But as and when you are going to perform any step in Power Query, on the right hand side we have a section named as Query Setting. In that you have properties. Below that you have Applied Step. So as and when you are going to perform any operation in Power Query. In the form of applied step that is going to get added over there. Okay, so suppose mistakenly you have clicked on uh, this use first row as a uh, as a header twice, due to which uh, a data a line of data got replaced as a header over there, and that is something I don't want. So I can simply go to the applied step and I can simply click on this cross icon to remove that step from there. Okay, so this kind of data cleaning operation we can perform in the Power Query. Power Query is something we are going to learn in depth in the upcoming session. This was just a small introduction about Power Query.
okay and today as it was a first session so we are going to keep it as uh, introduction part only in the next session we are going to start uh, with the actual visualization okay we'll first cover a power query in depth and then we can get uh, started we will get started with the visualization uh, i hope uh, this was good enough to uh, get started i just stop sharing now Thank you so much, sir. Yes. Okay, so guys, you like the session? Uh, Sejal, Satya, Suresh, Sushmita, Vardhan. Yes, yes. Okay. So for the future session, uh, I'll just paste some link in a chat box. Uh, 